All right, hi everyone, YouTube. Mystic Jasmine here. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a love potion, a love drawing potion, a love potion. Uh, love potions are for just that, to either enchant and entice someone to draw them to you, a specific person, or it can be used as a general love drawing. And I'm first gonna show you all how to make it, and then I'm going to talk to you about a few different ways this can be used and some optional additives to um, kind of tweak the formula to your specific desire, okay? So what we have here is a few combination of herbs. The first one I have here is rosebuds. The universal symbol for love. I think everyone would agree that you know roses are usually symbolically given um, to express love. There are other flowers also, but rosebuds is, is sort of traditional. We have some lavender. This is dry lavender. Lavender is great for drawing love. It's also good for drawing in peace, a sweet, peaceful type of love. I have some red clove red clover I should say you guys see that red clover this is also a very powerful flower that is used in traditional love spells I have some cinnamon sticks cinnamon is for passion and to spicing up the relationship spicing up the feelings kind of spicing up spice up I should say the energy between the two of you um, because you want passion, you want romance, you want spice, you want hot sex and, and, and desire. So um, you don't want the love potion to be a friendly type of love, but a really romantic, you know, fiery, uh, passionate type of love. I also have some coriander. Coriander is used for drawing in true, committed, loving relationships. So if you're looking for, you know, that special someone or you're looking for a relationship that's a little more than just a wild fling, then you'd want to use some coriander. You can leave the coriander out. Maybe you're just looking for a lustful night of fun, passion, and some good random sex with someone. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that also. But if you are looking for something a little more committed, then you'd want to use some coriander. Coriander comes in both the seeds or the powder. Either form that you are able to find is perfectly okay to use. I also have here my motor and pistol, and we're gonna be using this to mix our herbs up. Now, very simple, very easy, shouldn't take very long. Anyone can make this and it's very effective. So you wanna take some of your ingredients, starting with the roses. Uh, a lot of you know, you always hear me say, I don't measure anything. I just pinch and pour. Uh, some people like to measure out and that's fine if you do, but I don't. Some things I do, I, I'll take that back. Some things I do, but for this I don't. Because I don't, you know, I'm not gonna count each leaf of, of lavender that's going in here. You could, but I don't. So, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, do what feels right. Sprinkle of some coriander in here. And then I'm gonna add my cinnamon stick. Now, because I'm doing a video, I'm talking, but usually I would be speaking out loud or silently putting my hand over the ingredient and enchanting them with what each purpose is. So as I sprinkle the coriander, I would think or say something like magical coriander, use your properties of committed love to draw either a new love to me or you can insert the person's name if you're working on someone specific. Uh, magical cinnamon stick, use your love drawing properties to spice up the relationship between me and Melissa okay or you know Joseph whoever and that's what I would do for each herb another option is once you put all your herbs in there you can simply place your hands over it individually saying or speaking each herb out loud charging it with your intentions and telling it what its purpose is for this particular love potion is a general love potion that means this can be used for a man or a woman 
This can be used for a male-female relationship or a same-sex relationship. However, if you do want to maybe tailor it, uh, some people psychologically feel that they need to add a specific ingredient if they're trying to channel, you know, maybe you're a man trying to meet another man or a woman trying to meet another woman. If that's the case, for men in same-sex relationships, you can use High John the Conqueror root, which is very difficult to grind up. So if you can uh, find it in a powder form, if not, you can just add it. You just won't be able to grind it up. But you'll see what I'm going to do. So it won't, it won't really make a big difference. If you're a woman looking to attract another woman, then you can use some Queen Elizabeth root, also known as Oris root. That's O-R-R-I-S root. Um, I will list the name and the ingredients down below in the description box. So if you missed it, don't worry, it will be down there for you. All right, so now you've got all your ingredients in here. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take my pot Nothing fancy, nothing special, a regular old saucepan, soup pot, whatever. And I'm going to fill this up with some water. Uh, I'm not going to use very much, maybe about a cup, a cup and a half, depending. I'm only going to use enough, I'm going to, only going to fill it up with enough water that I'm going to use. And the reason is because these are, these are dried herbs, but these are not going to be having any type of preservative added to them. So we're not putting any alcohol or anything like that to preserve the mixture. Uh, just like anything else, these can spoil after a couple of days. So you only wanna use enough that you're gonna be working with and you do want to try to make it as fresh as possible. So a couple of the ways that I would use this is you can serve this as a tea to your lover, if you have a specific love interest that's coming over to spend time with you, you can serve this a glass of this as a tea, as long as they are not allergic. Some people are allergic to certain things. Um, hopefully, because these are just herbs and spices that are, you know, can be cooked with, the roses are perfectly fine to consume. Hopefully they're not allergic. You might wanna, you know, kinda err on the side of caution, but that is one way. And if you're gonna serve it as a tea, of course you want this to be relatively fresh. So I wouldn't serve this past maybe um, about 24 hours after it being made. All right, now, got all my ingredients in here, and I'm going to, in a clockwise motion, clockwise is to bring in, counterclockwise is to remove. You're trying to bring someone to you. So I'm going to crush down my herbs. And you always do this. Now this you do in an odd number. Seven is the number of love, 11, maybe even 13. But you kinda wanna crush these down. And as I'm doing this, you can recite a prayer, some words of power, speak your intentions, or an incantation. Um, one of the incantations that you could use, one of them that I use is as above, so below, and you can insert the person's name. Um, Melissa, you're in love with me, now let it flow. As above, so below, Melissa, you're in love with me, now let it flow. As above, so below, Joseph, you're in love with me, now let it flow. So what you're doing is you're charging this with your intention. You are specifically saying, telling the herbs what it's going to do and you're directing that energy to that person. Maybe it's not an individual you have in mind. If it's a new love, you know, you can use something similar as above, so below. Um, uh, new partner, come to me, let it flow. Or new love, come to me, let it flow. Something to that effect. It doesn't have to be that, but you get what I'm saying. And you wanna do this. I think I've done more than seven times or 11, but you wanna do this. So you wanna kinda get them crushed up. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to boil your water on the stove and you're going to place this down into the pot of boiling water. Once that's done, you allow it to boil, you allow it to steep. I let mine sit for about maybe 20 minutes and then you take it off and you let it cool. You want to let it cool all the way, all the way, all the way down. Once it's cooled, you're going to want to place it into a container where it's going to sit for 12 hours to absorb the essentials and extract the essential oils and the properties from each herb. So you have a choice of placing it inside of 
maybe a glass bowl or a container. If you have a wine bottle or something like this, you would take the mixture and you pour it down in here, herbs and all. You would then strain the mixture. You would either need a cheesecloth or you can use a strainer and you want to pour this over something else. So a way I would do that would be like this. I would have my strainer. I would pour my mixture in and the strainer would, would catch the herbs. You toss the herbs out and now you have your container of mixture and you pour it back into your glass bottle. The reason why I recommend glass is because plastic tends to give off chemicals and we don't want any of those chemicals, uh, especially if you're going to be planning on giving this to someone, but you just don't want any of those chemicals. You want to keep this in the most natural raw form as possible. Now, a few ways that this can be used, and this smells amazing, by the way, you guys. It smells absolutely divine. Another way that this can be used, aside from giving it as a tea, you can take a little bit of the, of the mixture. So let's say you have some in here and you're preparing a meal. You can pour a little bit, just a little bit. So I would just do maybe a tablespoonful, add it into if you're making, um, you know, some soup or spaghetti or something like that. Maybe not spaghetti, but some soup or something. You use a little bit to where it's not detectable by the palate, but enough so that the essence gets mixed in into the uh, recipe. You can also put this into a spray bottle. You put a little bit of spray bottle and spray yourself, maybe before you go out on the date to see that person, before they come over, or maybe you're just going out for a night of fun and you wanna meet someone, you'd spray yourself down. Again, caution that you are not allergic. So you might wanna do a test spot on your skin or someplace kind of undetectable and make sure you don't have some sort of allergic reaction. I would do that. Uh, some reactions can be delayed, so I would maybe do that the day before. If you know you're going out tomorrow, make it in advance and then, you know, make sure it doesn't give you a problem. Uh, another way of using the mixture is anointing a ritual candle. So if you have a spell candle, you know, let's say this is a candle, you can dress your candle with it. Of course, not getting the wick wet, but you can dress your candle with it. Um, you can spray down your sheets and pillows. Maybe you're planning an intimate night with that someone, just like you would take some Febreze. Uh, you could lightly spray your sheets and pillows when they're going to be coming over to stay the night with you or something to that effect. There's many, many, many different ways of using this. It's very effective. It works and it smells very, very good. So I do hope this has been helpful. If any of you decide to use this, uh, and you have success, please let me know. If you have your own recipe that you've tried and it worked, I would love to hear about it. So leave the comment below. If you like this video, be sure to let me know by hitting like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to my channel or if you've been here before, you don't wanna miss anything, you gotta hit that subscribe button. Again, I am Jasmine Atten, Mystic at the Crossroads. You can find me on my website at oneritualaway.com or on Facebook, and you can also follow me on Instagram at one. Ritual away. Talk to you guys soon.